Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. Today we're going to fix a problem that has been a problem for a very long time. Um, when I got the big Monarch quite a few years ago now, um, I needed a big boring bar. I needed a two inch diameter bar and I wanted something a little longer because I was doing some pretty deep stuff. Um, and this bar has worked. Um, it hasn't worked great, but it's worked and it's gotten me by. Um, but all I had was 1018 to make the bar at the time. And what I did was I bought these, these Ken of metal. Um, this is a Kendex and I've got some Ken lock ones. Um, this is one that I used to use quite a bit. But they're all kind of, they're all, all these two inch ones are interchangeable. Um, this is the one I use the most. This is a Kenlock. And it uses a big CNMG insert. I think this is a 542 or 543, one or the other. But this is what I use for most of it. Um, and it's just a, a little head that you interchange onto your bars. So what we need to do is we need to take this new piece of material I have, I got some 4140 pre-hard here, um, two inch, and we're gonna bore it for the recess here, or for this, the stub, and then we'll take it over to the radial drill, we'll transfer punch it, and then we'll drill and tap it on the radial drill for the mounting holes. So um, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put the steady rest up in the Monarch, the middle size Monarch here, and uh, we'll get set up and get going on this. Okay, so just to explain what I did there for setting up the steady rest, um, and I've always done it this way, but there are other ways of doing it. You can um, scribe a line or a couple of lines. Use your um, use your centering uh, fixture for your combination square and just scribe a couple lines. Get your center, run your tailstock in, and uh, match up your center to your scribed lines. That's one way to do it. Um, and I've done that before in the past. But this, when I got something this short, a couple feet, not a big deal. Um, I can clamp it up, tighten the chuck, and then I just bring my, my rollers up to it. I run roller bearings on all of my steady rests. Um, I just switched everything over in that way. Um, then I don't need to use oil, keep, keep lubing it. Um, and it's a much better a better system, it just holds much better tolerance. But, um, so I just brought them in until they touched and uh, pushed them a little further, get them so that they don't skip at all, tighten it all down, and uh, that's good enough. You're gonna have a little deflection here and there, but it, it's not gonna be too bad that it's gonna be a big problem. Um, anytime you run something long, you're gonna have deflection. So next step here is uh, we'll face this side off and then I'll drill in, and then uh, we'll start boring it to, to uh, whatever our stub there is. But I'll drill in about, about um, three quarter of an inch to start with to get it started, and then, then we'll uh, finish it off with a little boring bar. So let's get that set up and going.
Okay, so we got it bored and polished it up a little bit with just some fi uh, fine emery cloth, and it's a nice fit. It's it's a fit. Um, it's perfect. But now what we got to do is we got to take a transfer punch, and these things are relatively inexpensive. You can buy them by the set, and they just uh, a punch with a little point on them, and they come in multiple sizes. I have them all the way up to one inch to go in an existing hole, like so, and transfer the mark. So because this mates up, what we do is we install that, install our head back in, take our transfer punch, slide it in, give it a smack. Now we have our first mark. First mark on our, on our uh, boring bar. Now, I'm gonna do one at a time because my plan is to put it on there, I got, and uh, drill and tap it, put the head on, and then do the other two so that everything lines up good. But, I'm gonna show you this. This is a pretty cool setup. This is a magic chuck. And you can set it up however you want. They got these holders like this. These are just a Morse taper holder, and I put in whatever I want. I've got multiple drill chucks, I've got um, taps, all kinds of stuff set up. And you can just, that easy. You lift this collar, slide it in, collar drops down, you're there. It does float a little bit, there's a little movement in it, so it'll help you line up your hole. So I'm going to move the camera in, and we'll drill the first one, and then I'm going to hand tap it because this is hard material. I don't want to break my tap. So let's get moved in and get started. Well, there it is. Really that simple. Not much to it. But when you need a boring bar and you need something big, you, you don't have much for options unless you want to spend a ton of money. Or you want to, um, you could slot it and uh, use, a, uh, use a tool bed in there or an insert holder or something. You could, there's multiple options. But I think I paid like, 75 or a hundred dollars for this head and uh, I think the material recently was like 50 bucks for the two inch 4140 so I mean really it's not that bad for a decent boring bar just a little bit of time to build it so with that we're gonna end the video here uh, hope you learned some stuff oh, if not uh, well, stay tuned we'll we'll be doing more and hopefully you can learn something then and um, yeah, but hey you got to see the uh, Carlton radial drill get used, and uh, a steady rest. So pretty cool stuff, uh, fun stuff. Um, this is stuff that I do almost every day. Steady rest, radial drill, um, just there's always doing something different, different machines every day. So um, 
I'll keep shooting these videos and we'll keep going forward with, with this. Um, so please check out our website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share. Share our channel, share our content. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.